still make good boost sounds too. That was a close one, dude. It almost, almost sounded like it didn't want to go. It's okay. It's almost time to start showing this thing some love again. And by love, I mean prepping it to beat its ass. <laughs> dude, we also gotta take care of this. The sun is just killer, but the BRZ and the Civic are just hidden behind all this stuff. We had a big storm one day, so. I tucked both these cars in here. I'm actually surprised with how wide this garage is. The door is a door and a half. On camera, it probably looks like a single car. The door is a door and a half instead of like a two door, but there's a decent amount of depth on both sides of this door. Like I got super wide body BRZ and a two foot staircase and there's still room in between each car and the wall. Interesting. <laughs> we are leaving a trail. A nice little trail. That leads all the way back to the front garage. Look at this little puddle, dude. Oh, this was not part of the plan. So I just want to start today off remind you guys that the 3D hoodies and the uh, windbreakers are going for sale March 26th. Do not miss them. They are some of the best stuff that we've ever made. Actual super quality, like extremely waterproof, like really nice stuff. We're getting an early start because it, it might be a long one. It might not. Apparently we're leaking coolant. I don't know when that happened. I'm not happy about it. This car has a lot of stuff that we got to fix. Not a lot, but it hasn't been running right. It hasn't been running right for a long time. And then when we took it out for that Christmas shoot, when we wrapped it in wrapping paper, it, uh, it went boom. So we're just gonna let it cool down. Now that was, that was, that's the fan, that's not the engine. The engine didn't go boom. But it still scared the absolute crap out of me. And also means I can't drive it because as soon as the car gets up to temperature, it just instantly overheats. Which it should not be doing with this thick boy rad. This is a triple core. We just put the dual core in the other Civic, so it shouldn't be overheating. That's not good. We should probably start with the coolant because that could be a game changer. Not, 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 not what the plan was for today. Do you hear it just seeping? I think that's just air going in. I don't know if you guys can see the little like water runway. It's hard for you guys to see. I can only see it on phone cam. So basically it looks like my water pump's bad. I just did a little bit of research while I was under there and it says that when your water pump's bad, there's like this little passageway where coolant just comes out. It's just like, nah, the water pump's no good. We're leaving the block. We're not staying inside. So should we just, we'll just do it. You're gonna go pick it up. Hey, that's a nice, mm, what'd you get? This? What is this, champion? Does this have a front pocket? Is this thing waterproof? Oh my God, it is. Dude, where'd you get that? Yeah, I got this apart actually pretty quick. This is like, I didn't want to do it, but then when I started doing it, it's like actually really, really simple. Not simple, but like, it's not too hard. So I got all this stuff off. I didn't have to take the motor mount off. I took it off anyways, just to give me a little extra room. And I accidentally loosened this tension already. So you can see the old belt super loose. The belt looks okay. Like it doesn't look terrible, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's worthy of a replacement. But Courtney picked up this Continental timing belt kit from Part Source, dude. I feel like this was overly expensive for what we needed, but it's gonna work. So she just got back, we got a belt, we got a new tensioner, a water pump, and we got a gasket. We can probably just pop this whole belt off right now because it's pretty loose. Make sure nothing spins at the bottom. Nice. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say we didn't replace this. Honestly, it doesn't look... Uh, 
Yeah, you can tell it's worn. It's not, not majorly worn, but it's worn. I think I'm trying to justify it to myself that we're doing it, so it's, you know, it's worth it, whatever. You guys also probably noticed, which was super, super convenient, that um, this thing left itself a top dead center. Like, check this out. My lines are lined up here. My line is lined up down at the bottom, and I never moved it. On the time lapse, you probably saw me never even spin that thing. It literally, the final crank, put it right to top dead center, which was sick. this thing dude ew we never took this apart when we bought this motor we bought this thing for like a hundred bucks it was just a block it was just like the k20 actually it was just bare there was just nothing there and we just we didn't change things we didn't need to we were still very broke at the time of this uh and yeah no wonder it was leaking so what's cool is you can see where it's leaking right there this little passage this little see that hole right there and then see how there's like a little tunnel that goes right over to the the impeller or whatever you want to call that if you guys ever see up in your block, coolant just racing out of that hole. It just means you need a new water pump, basically, is what I was Googling this morning. That's yuck. That's mucho yucko. Honestly, if I was moving fast, I don't know how long this is taking me, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that, like, if you know what you're doing, this is like an hour and a half job, easy. So I'm gonna toss this new gasket in this boy. Get rid of any of the big guns that's built up where this gasket needs to go. Engine is supporting itself freely. We got our new belt, everything's done. We are good to go, boys. Well, we're done the job we didn't know we had to do. It's a good thing that we caught that when we did. If I was still parking this car outside, it may have kept leaking and I literally might have never known. So we do have a couple things to do, but I guess while we have coolant all over the floor and we're ready to go, we may as well <laughs> find out what's left. Oh yeah, we're getting some immediate drippage, which is good. Oh yeah, we got some, boys. We got some, boys. Oh, we missed, no. I feel like I just can't do this without making a mess. I'll pop this and let some flow happen. Oh no, bro, no. Ooh. Rip, dude, rip. No, it's all the way at the door already. Oh my God. A few moments later. So this is uh, the main issue that we're trying to tackle here, which is why I can't drive this car right now. If you guys see right now, this is like almost touching. Turbo and the Vrat are super, super close. And what happened was when we originally put this in, I didn't have any sort of like feet like we just put on the K20 rad where I could like bolt them on and put them wherever I wanted. I was basically using the feet that were already here. I put these rubber bushings in and the rubber bushings actually, I guess, popped out while I was driving one day. And this thing doesn't really move a whole lot. It tends to shift just a little bit. And what ends up happening is turbo pinches against the fan and the fan ends up just detonating inside. So first up, well, we gotta just basically make sure that this doesn't happen again. There's a better look at what we're working at, dude. Fan is literally off, and the blade, you can see the blades down here. This shroud off. <laughs> that is so dumb, dude. Where's this fan sit? Right here? So when it was spinning, it just went, smoked it, and then I guess these went smoked it hard enough that they got tossed, and then they're just getting beat up as this other piece went around. But lucky that it didn't like burst the rad, like the actual fins or something, and, and start leaking. Don't entirely know what we're working with here, but let's, let's check this out. Ooh. Ooh, these things look like tanks. As far as these fans go, dude, they're obviously um, way more of a tank fan. The housings are actually pretty similar. I think the main difference is that the, the blade, these ones, from the little bit of research I did, I might be wrong, but these ones are like supposed to give you way more air movement just because of the design of them. They're supposed to pump a lot more CFM, I think is the, the right term. As long as they work, I'm good with it. This is the one thing I was so scared of happening. I just bought a new mic. It's one of like the ones you gotta turn the power on and off. I'm used to having the one that just turns on with the camera. I was playing with the filter thing, trying to like do sound testing and see like what it did. Cause I was just, I came out from inside. I was bored. I turned it off. Okay, and I just noticed it was off. Here's what you guys missed, or at least you got with no sound. Uh, I painted this, cut like 
whatever, just a little bit off. That way the rad will kind of slide down a little bit easier um, because right now I want it to come down as far as possible with as little interference as possible. I'm gonna let that dry and while I'm letting that dry, I was gonna replace this piece of intercooler piping. We have this one little piece left from the K20 and we have this little 90 that can come right on up. I'm gonna go ahead and try and angle it so that this can sit like here and kind of have a nice big gap between the downpipe. You guys also missed me taking off these uh, clamps. Gotta love the good old eBay clamps because when you go to twist them off after they get rusty, <laughs> they just break right in half. Where's the other end? I literally got like one turn in and this boy just broke right off. So current task, uh, get this turbo clock in a, a better direction. hoses back on everything here looks tight the new fan is on intercooler piping should clear I just don't like the way the fans sitting and I wish I could change with this rad as well when I look around every single piece of this car I wish I could change I just want you guys to know that like I know that th this isn't perfect the way we're mounting some of these things but basically my goal right now is just to keep the car running and it's important we learned on this car everything we know came from here and that's good and th th like I understand that, but at the same time, now that we know better, I wanna come back and fix this. Fixing it isn't just one thing, two things. It's literally, I need to just blank canvas this entire car to inside feel like it's at the quality it needs to be at. And we're just not gonna do that. We don't have time. I don't wanna build this car a third time. I've built this car many times. I'm, bo I'm bored of building it. But just so you guys know, I, I'm, I'm feeling you, okay? This car needs a lot. All that being said, the rad's mounted. Everything's back together. Another part that we have going today, big Bertha, <laughs> I hate that it's so big, but we got ourselves another football size wastegate. This thing comes with a little hardware bag, little little seat ring, flange and a gasket, and a flange and a gasket. So if you guys remember in our last time, we took this thing to the dyno, I don't know, the wastegate's pooched. It doesn't work right, and it's probably because I have this hood exit, this nasty hood exit, and to be honest, there's been, living out west, there's a lot of times where this car got caught in the rain and like I didn't know, or it was too late, or whatever. Lots of water got in this, okay? It's not ideal, but it's just the way it went. And when it gets in the wastegate, then you boost and it comes back out because it's obviously blocked, but it's just sitting in there. Anyways, the insides of this thing is probably no good. And we've also had this issue where like, we're running one boost line over to here that goes down to the turbo, but this one is for a boost controller. We've never been able to run it because you can see the hood hits right here because it's so big. So this boy that I ordered up is a little bit smaller. If you put it on top, you can see it doesn't stick up as far. I mean, it's still a massive big boy, but that's the setup we have going. So that's what we're going to keep doing for now. And both of these lines run off the back side here. So I can put it here, run both my lines over there. We can run a boost controller. We can do all that stuff without having to worry about stuff exploding and dying and breaking. I guess we just gotta swap the springs because this is, I don't know what this has in it and that one has whatever it's tuned for. Oh, that one was so much more loaded. I'm gonna say that this one was going for probably like 15 pounds. This boy's probably like seven. This one looks much better. I know on camera they probably look pretty similar, but it's not so tall. Both these lines are coming off, so we don't have a boost controller hooked up right now. It doesn't matter till we get it tuned anyway. We got this guy connected back up. I don't know if I showed you, but I got the intercooler piping all dialed in again too. This guy's mounted, wires are done. I think we're good. The main issues I was having was the rad kept blowing up fans and I couldn't boost this car. And apparently my water pump exploded. There was actually like two more things that I bought for this car, but after looking at other pieces of the car, I'm like, that's not even worth doing. So I know it's a little bit yuck to look at right now. Everything's not perfect, but we should be good to go. Got a bunch of coolant to dump in there and got myself some nice liquid molly. Freshen this thing up. So oil, coolant, bleeding, test driving. Whoa! Fail! We failed! We failed so hard. Oh, why? Why? I just told you earlier in this video, I literally can't do coolant without making a mess. I forgot to put the freaking coolant plug in the bottom of the rad and I just dumped like half that thing in there. Coolant just, it just doesn't work with me, man, no matter how much planning. My brain just doesn't work when I try to use coolant. Dude, what a waste. I'm just having one of those days. Okay, one more time. 
Listening? I think we're good. Oh no! What a terrible start. <sighs> gotta move this gas tank. Just gotta move my gas tank out of the way, nothing good. Oh, that's already open. Good thing no one broke in. This is an exciting test because we're not just doing this to check oil level. I need to make sure I timed the engine correctly when I put it back in. If it's not timed correctly, we are gonna connect the engine crane to this. We're gonna yank it out. We're gonna throw it in the ocean. Nope, that's bad. That would kill it. Oh, that would kill the wheels. We don't wanna kill the wheels. We're gonna throw it in the dump and we're gonna burn the car. Rip. This is actually more important than you think it is because if this doesn't work, like, then, then I messed up. I saw the side skirts off. It's because the lift doesn't have like, the arms are screw adjusters. So you thread them up and down. Whereas my other one has like, you take the mm. arm off and you put lifters, right? Yeah. Like risers or whatever. This doesn't have that. You just, like right now I'm threading it down so that it'll slip underneath. But the max height is not higher than this, which is just really stupid. Okay, here's the fun part. It's probably good, yeah? The rad has to be the highest point. So like technically it'll never be the highest point because it's lower, but. <laughs> You want all the air to flow forward, so we're gonna send it to what I call fully. Have you done this before? Probably. Okay, cool. I just have to gas, right? You just have to hold the gas at one position. I'm gonna stand over here, burn the crap out of myself. I don't know what's different, but it's much healthier than it's been starting too. It might just be the temperature. But ever since we got back to Ontario, I did not like the start like this. Uh, maybe it just likes the warm. Not gonna lie to you guys, I told you I got a brand new mic. I am getting this mic covered in coolant. Fix that kind of weird bumper gap thing we were looking at while I was waiting for this to heat up. And now Corny says we're at like 195. I'm gonna hang out for a sec. I wanna see the fan kick on. Uh -huh. Dude, that's actually really quiet. Now we're fighting the fan for temp. This is good. Yeah, the fan worked. It already turned off, the fan. That's good. The other one used to run forever. That fan was on for, what, 28 seconds this clip. So that's pretty good. As far as putting everything back together, timing and all that stuff, I think we're good. The only thing that I'm questioning, like it's not getting too hot. The only thing I don't know is if this wastegate, like it should be fine, there should be no problems, but when you don't test things, that's when you find problems. So all we gotta do is just like a little, Hitting boost cut felt familiar. Has it been hitting boost cut yes. since our tune didn't work? I think it's been hitting boost cut. So our, uh, that, mm, you know, this is all coming back to me. It sounds very familiar. What we're saying here is that it does hit boost cut and until we get it retuned, that's why we were, that's why we weren't happy with it. But now that we have a new wastegate that doesn't, that's why it boosted. <laughs> See how that all came together? The old wastegate leaked so it would never build the amount of boost it needed to so it ran on whatever it was running, but now that I fixed the wastegate and it doesn't leak, it's boosting to what it's supposed to boost to, which is making us cut at eight pounds, because that spring's probably like a nine, 10 pound spring, but our old tune is running for like five pounds because it was leaking at five. But if I just don't send it all the way, I should be all right. Interesting. Got a little sketchy because there was a guy behind me, I didn't know what he was up to, but. <laughs> We can, you, we can still make good boost sounds too. Well, that's good. We let everybody on our new drag strip know that we live here now. Hi, something in my trunk is rattling. After all of my brain fartiness and not having tuned this car or done anything to it for over a year, it's a good thing that we're hitting boost cut is what we're coming back to. Because that means we're boosting before we weren't boosting. Yeah. So that's good. Like I told you guys, there's still a ton I want to do to this thing. Oh, can you turn my lights off before my battery dies? So we did actually a really nice service on this thing. Everything's fresh, coolant's fresh, oil's fresh, temp belt's fresh, water pump's fresh, and we got a brand new wastegate. We can get a good tune going. That's good. And we got it up to temp. Like it got hot and it cooled itself back yeah. down. That's it. I'm gonna steal some candy from my my Deechworks box here. 
Chuck, my boy's a teach word. That's it, that's all I got for you guys. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out and stay committed.